why we're here in Galveston, Texas. Uh, down at the beach, the seawall, and uh, I have brother Samuel Eby here, and we're gonna hear his a short version of his testimony, and we're gonna ask him what he's doing today. Hello, Mr. Samuel Eby. Hello, sir. Nice to have you here in our program. Nice to have you here. Great. Uh, you have a past. Oh, yeah. Like those days before you knew the Lord? Yeah, the bad old days. Yeah. How can you describe your battle days, the hardest battles with the three birds? Horrible, horrible, horrible. All right. And uh, I have to go a little bit deeper in that question and ask you what was so horrible? Well, from a young age, uh, my mother was 18 when I was born. My father uh, was gone. Uh, by the time I was born, he was already left. So uh, it's hard for a mother, single, 18 years old, to raise a child without the Lord. Never went to church, nothing. And then shortly after, another my brother was born from another man who was an alcoholic. And uh, from there it progressed. Uh, my mother could not raise two boys. Uh, she was still young and, uh, you know, party, this and that. I was raised in that environment. Uh, so from the age of when I was born till 17, till I left the home which was about 15 or 16, I guess, when I left home finally. Mm -hmm. We were just raised in an environment of parties and, uh, and uh, we were wild kids and uh, my mother couldn't control us. And, uh, you know, being raised around partying and, and that type of life and nothing to do with church, didn't know anything of Jesus, who this was, the, the story of, in the Bible or of the past of where he died, I had no idea of. So, <clears throat> started from a young age, drinking, doing drugs, progressively to more hard drugs, cocaine, heroin, uh, not working. So, and I left when I was about 15. My brother left when he was 14. And just out into the world on our own. And, uh, you know, nothing good. And we know that... Uh Living a life like that, like that is, is not healthy. And, uh, no. So, uh, one day you, you found uh, the Lord? Yes, sir. Thank God. Uh, How did you find Him or did He find you? Well, He found me. Uh, even not going to church or reading the Bible, I knew, I think we all have some sense of that we're not, we're created by something bigger than ourselves. And I could. I would even pray, but I didn't know who I was praying to. But I knew I was praying to a God. I didn't know who, though. I didn't know it was Jesus. I didn't know it was our Father, God, who made us in the Bible. Christian, God. And, uh, you know, like I said, uh, out in the world, you know, of course, in and out of jail. Uh, long time of, in jail, in and out, in and out, in and out. And finally, I came to, I was from Michigan. Well, I came here to Houston to start a new life. Because all the police knew who I was. Uh, you know, all the old people knew who I was. So I said, well, I'll come here. My little brother was here. He told me, hey, come here. So I said, okay, I'll come here. Houston, I'll start a new life, no more. Well, I came here, I wasn't long in trouble again, cocaine, bang, you know, all the same things, went to jail. Well, while I was there, I said, God, I have to, I have to quit. I'm, I thought I was going back to, I was going to prison. I was sure I was going to prison for a long time because I'd already have a lot of trouble, felonies. And this is the last time I said, okay, that's it, Lord. I'm going. You know, God help me. God help me. Not Jesus. Just God help me. Well, somehow the, God had his hand on my life to where the computers here in Houston didn't pull up all my old record in Michigan. If it would have, I'd be gone to prison. Now, today, I'd be in prison. For somehow, it didn't. So I got out like it was the first time ever I got in trouble. The computers didn't line up. I said, okay, well, this is it. This is my chance. I need to get help. So I just wanted to go to a drug and alcohol rehabilitation. No Christian, just, uh, I said, I need to get clean, which I've already been to a lot of, from a young age, uh, juvenile. I've been to drug and alcohol rehabilitation, but I never wanted to get clean. Now I did. So I said, I'll go 
check in again this time for good well <clears throat> the place was a christian christian rehabilitation i said oh god what did i get myself into these people are crazy it's a cult oh well, i'm gonna stay anyways because i know if i left it, it was a, it wasn't any worse it was it was better than where i came from oh we'll try this and you know it wasn't long before jesus the lord our, my lord he got a hold of my heart and uh I started going to church and seeing these people. All my life, people would take. It was me, I would take, you know. Everybody around me, I'd have friends, but I'd still know this guy, everybody wants something. Went to church, and these people, man, were trying to love me and, and, and didn't want anything. I was thinking, man, what do these people want? They gotta want something, what is it? And it turned out, you know, after a while, I figured out, man, they don't want anything. They just wanna love me. And it's the Holy Spirit in these people and that's when the, you know, the, the miracle t took place. Uh, and I invited Jesus into my heart. And from then, I never had nothing my whole life. Nothing except a needle in my arm or a straw up my nose, a bottle in my hand. I'd have, I didn't even work. I'd steal, rob, whatever I had to do. But I never had anything. I'd stay on people's couches, uh, stay with girls, you know, whatever. But I never had a car. If I did, I'd wreck it real fast. I never would have a job. I never had a love of her family or relationship and now the lord has blessed me with all those things that, uh, that's you, wonderful yes and now you also have a call in your life yes to be used by god oh god, yeah. god is using us christians he, he's blessing us so we can be blessings to others so what's on your heart what do you want to want to do what's what's your what's your place in the body of christ how do you look at your your call well, it's important for me and for all Christians, but the Lord revealed to me, once we get a good foundation in God, which I still have a lot to learn, but I know the basics, principles, it's important to share the message with others. And for me, I can relate to that generation or that group of people. You know, I can speak to people for my experiences. My experiences have been what I've told you. So. First and foremost, uh, God has called me to, to, tell, to, to minister to people with drug and alcohol problems, addictions, and tell them, look, I was about as bad as it could get, and this is what worked after, it took me, you know, 22 years, I'm 30 now, it took me 22 years to figure it out and try my way, or the state run way, or the government way, and, it, and Jesus was the only thing that worked. And I can tell, you know, this is a short version, short version. there's a lot of bad things, but really not focus on that but I could tell people look you know what you're doing I, I, I've done that or worse or you know bad stuff and the Lord changed my heart if he could do it with me he can do it with anybody so first and foremost that and then also of course uh, it kind of goes hand in hand with this ambassador motorcycle ministry because the motorcycle rider biker is that same cycle of death drugs drinking it's all hand in hand, rock and roll, that lifestyle. And so I believe I've been called to that ministry as well. It goes hand in hand kind of with the drug and alcohol uh, ministry of rehabilitation through Christ though. Through Christ is the only way that it'll work. And you'll truly, now you may get clean, I believe this, you can get clean and sober, but you will never be truly 100% happy. You'll never have the fruit of, of peace, love, joy uh, in your life. Only Jesus can fill that gap and that's, that's what I've been called to tell a uh, lost, dying generation that's, uh, you know, of people just doing drugs and, and, and you know, the, like I said, the biker ministry falls kind of hand in hand with that. So, so far, that's what it, that's what it, that's what uh, the Lord has called me to do. And uh, have you have you seen uh, people people's life change through your uh, ministry? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. That's yeah, good. Yes. I just want to wish you good luck future and uh, thank you for taking your time okay <laughs> that was Samuel E.B. and uh, he's a man of God with a pure heart a passion for the lost and uh, we know that when people get saved and Jesus moves in there's a fire burning and uh, the only way to get further is to help other people God is blessing us so we can be a blessing to others